How about Daphne? What? <laughs> what? Uh, so how did you decide on 2019. that? 2019. 2019? Oh, boy. April Fool's Day is the, when we opened the door. Oh, boy. April Fool's Day. Yeah. 2019. So how, how did you decide that location? I mean, how far is it? Is it two? About three, three and a half. Three and a half hours. hours. Okay. So in Alabama, all, all of the growth really is occurring in two places, down in the Mobile Bay Eastern Shore area and up in Madison County, the Huntsville area. Okay. Right. That, that's where everything's happening. Um, as far as kind of rapid growth goes. Yep. And so started talking to our team about, hey, we either want to be in the Mobile area or the Huntsville area, you know? Yeah. And so we had four team members that had connections to the Mobile area. Okay. And they said, if you go to Mobile, we'll move down there and go. Right. Okay, great. That's where we're going, you know? And so, because I wanted to, I wanted to seed it with people that were already in the organization and understood the culture for sure, for sure. who we are and how we do things and everything. And so, you know, it was, we had one electrician, one okay. plumber, okay. one HVAC guy, one office person. Wow. And you were, and you went in all three trades. That was our launch team. Yeah. We would go all three trades day one. Yeah. Okay. And, um, praying, praying, praying. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it was harder Very humbling. and cost more money than we, this is another one Yeah, that a year in, Very humbling I'm experience. going, this is probably a bad call. Yeah. I know. Cause it, we, it just kept, we kept having to feed it capital, kept sure. having yeah. to feed it capital. And, and, you know, a lot of days when we didn't have calls right. to run and we're just paying them to, okay, wash your truck for the 18th time this month, you know, and, um, and, and of course, but you we know, did the, have brand awareness, so we knew we uh, had that going, and we were starting our campaign on television. Okay, and people were, were already recognizing Carrie. Okay, or we'd go into the restaurants or wherever. So we did start building up momentum. Yeah, because they saw us; they saw our trucks everywhere. And well, that was an, but, but, it, but it took from people that lived in Birmingham that had places in Gulf oh, Shores. You got it. In a mobile sure. people knew us already. Sure. That was another one that it took about 18 months to turn the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we're just hard headed enough to go, we're going to make it work. Yeah. You know, like I convince people to sell their house and move. Yeah. I'm not going to go, Hey, right. that little experiment didn't work out. Our mind. Yeah. Sell your house, move back up here. You know, that, That's that cool. wasn't an option. Um, did those four people, they they were solid, but did, did they even leave at that point? We lost two of the four. Two of four in the, in that first eighteen months. So then uh, you got to scramble to find because um, and this is a kind of another lesson I learned. Yeah. Um, they came from working for us in the Birmingham market, which was really plenty. Kind of yeah, the land How of many calls. I can't get to all of my calls. Right. You know, there was never a shortage of calls. Right. You know, it was all in Birmingham, it was always a shortage of technicians. So they came from that to, hey, you don't have one call to run today. Mm -hmm. right? Make that a good one. Yeah. And, um, you know, a couple of them just like they never got past that. Sure. This, then, then we started replacing them with local okay. mm -hmm. people that, that didn't have that expectation of we're just going to pile unlimited calls on you. Right. Um, were they from other service, so, from other service businesses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just recruiting, you know, line. Especially the, uh, as he, gosh, the, the plumber that we got to replace our plumber. Yeah. Has been with us ever since. He's now our plumbing service manager down there. Mm -hmm. He was young. He was like 22, 21 or 22 at the time, but he already had his license. Yeah. And just sincere. Smart. Yeah. Hard worker. And, you know, he, he's one of those that he, he, he'll run the play. Yeah. You know, like just do this. Right. And it works. Right. So we've been blessed, you know, and, mm -hmm. and really I will tell you, like, she's way better at this than I am, but she always prays God send us good people. Yeah. And he's been faithful and done that over the years. And, and it's the business. It, and I always tell people, it's like, I, I, whatever kind of business you think you're in, you're really in the people. people business. Yeah. Business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We fix stuff. And we got to have technically sound people, but more important, can they interact with people? Right. You know, in a, in a, in a courteous, honest, respectful way. Yeah. Oh. I, I know Gabe, your son runs 
uh, recruiting now. But back then, you've got four, what, four or five people you said met the location, two, two leave. You got to mm-hmm. try to replace them fast. There's always a temptation to hire yeah. anybody. Yeah. Like, so what, what were you doing in those days to really find sound people? Yep. I mean, prayer is a good one, good thing, yep. right? But some, yeah, sometimes it takes you know, a little more than that, too. I've had conversations with Gabe, you know, and Gabe would go, because he would get frustrated, you know, because he was tasked with finding of it. And, and, you know, I'm talking to him every day going, hey, we really need a plumber. And he goes, Dad, if we would lower our standard just a little bit, I could hire you a bunch of guys. Yeah. He's like, oh, that's not an option. But remember one of the Eagle summits that we went to, we were introduced to Mark, yep. who has the culture index. Hey, oh, yeah. And right, so, so that was a tool that we all already had in place. And so Gabe was actually able to start using that because we wanted to make sure about the culture fit. Yeah. So that was one of the tools that we had. But um, what was the other avenue that he went, Gabe used? Well, so. um, I mean, to start with, like we had never had a full-time recruiter. Right. Um, and um, Gus was mm-hmm. kind enough to let Gabe come and spend like two weeks with their recruiting team. Okay. Mm-hmm. They had put together a three ring binder with everything they knew about recruiting. They put it in a thumb drive. Yeah. And because like we had never had that position, we didn't, we didn't know how to do it. Right. They knew how to do it. And there again, we just said, they figured it out. Right. Mm-hmm. We're going to do it this way. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. And so, you know, that, that was a, that's one of those things, a, a benefit from being in this organization that I couldn't even put a value on. Right. Like you can't quantify that. And there's been so many other things like that where something I've picked up from another member, you know, somebody going, hey, if you just do this this way. Right. Um, th- that has been invaluable yeah. through the years. Yeah. And Gus has been great. Yeah. He's, a, he's in particular. When you open a location like that, it's three and a half hours from home. How much are you going down there, back and forth, managing both? Yeah, <laughs> a bunch. Yeah, Our early on, a lot. Right. Um, and, and and I don't think we went enough. Yeah, frankly, uh, we probably should have went more. Right. Um, particularly, um, once we turned the corner at about eighteen months, and it started growing pretty rapidly. Well, now you're adding team members all yeah. the time, and that's when culture can start getting away from you. Right. And so you you better have some people there that, that kind of understand the culture and protect the culture. Yeah. Um, and so every time we go, what we're focused on the most is just reinforcing that culture. Right. You know, and get everybody together, um, talk about who we are and how we do things. Yeah. You know, um, because all the process stuff, you can, that's easy. Yeah. I mean, so that's not. You know, you can figure that stuff out. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is, can you, can you maintain that consistency of experience? Right. Um, you know, if you go to Chick-fil-A, it doesn't matter where it's at. Yeah. You know, they're going to smile at you, say my pleasure, hand you a sack that has what you ordered in it. Right. You know, and they're going to treat you that way. Yeah. And, and so, you know, you, it doesn't need to be, well, this location, they're really good. This one, not so much, right. or this department, not, you know, like. Yeah, but it's you got to spread that across, and so if if somebody's considering opening a second location, yeah, plan on spending a, a significant amount of time there because it, you you cannot. I don't think that you can develop culture remotely. Right, you got to do that live and in person. 